Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the add-on 2D to 3D location. This add-on was designed to make your life easier by helping you quickly find a specific point in 3D space based on camera tracking or match moving. Now let's make something clear. This is not a tracker. Instead, it's an add-on that performs a 2D to 3D triangulation, kind of like how a GPS system works. This becomes really useful when you're working on a tracking that doesn't have any solid reference points, or when you need extra points in specific areas. Normally, you'd have to either send the shot back to the match move team or spend a lot of time trying to figure it out manually. Both options take time, and that's exactly what this add-on helps you avoid. So I created this tool with a simple goal in mind, boost productivity. And the best part is, it works with trackings created in any software, whether inside Blender or imported from outside. All right, with that explained, let's jump into the tutorial. In this first example, I have a tracking that was created in After Effects and then imported into Blender. As you can see, this is a tracking without any clear reference points to help me place my 3D objects in the scene. And this is exactly where the add-on starts to show its potential. Let's say, for instance, that I want to add a 3D object on top of this building. Since the tracking came from After Effects and we don't have much control over the user trackers, I would normally need to export multiple versions trying to find a good reference or spend a lot of time doing it manually. As you can see, manually triangulating a point is not a simple process. You might need to create multiple views, move through the timeline several times, and even then, it's still hard to get accurate results. That's why I'm going to show you how simple it is to find this point using the add-on 2D to 3D location. With it, we can easily locate either a single point or even multiple points at the same time. On the panel, we have two main options, create single location and create location groups. In this first example, we'll start by using create single location with the operation mode set to single location. We can also do this through the right click menu, which in my opinion is the fastest and most convenient way to use the add-on. So start by clicking create single location, then click on the exact point where you want to create a location reference. After clicking, Move the timeline to a point where you can still see the desired location. Then in the 3D view, right-click and go to Add 2D Marker and click on the same point you clicked on in another frame in the background image in the previous frame. You can see that with just two markers created, a native Blender empty is automatically generated, so you already have a visual reference. However, the ideal is to add at least three markers to make sure the triangulation in 3D space is more accurate. Keep in mind that the quality of this point is directly connected to the quality of your camera tracking. The best approach is to work with a background image without distortion inside the 3D view. In this case, we're only using a simple plate, which doesn't help much. But later on, we'll look at other examples to make all of this clearer. But still in this same scene, let's look at another example, this time using Create Location Groups. Imagine in this scene, you want to place a large banner on this building. For that, we'll need to create four empties to give us the proper reference. But we don't have to create them manually. We can use Create Location Groups. To start, position the background image in a frame where you can clearly see all the points that will be created because the screen will be temporarily frozen at that frame during the creation process. So go ahead and click on Create Location Groups and then click on the four points we need to place this banner. If it doesn't come out perfect, we can always refine the positions later. To finish, just press S key in the keyboard, or simply right-click with the mouse, as shown in the message at the bottom of the screen. After that, we follow the same steps with Create Single Location, moving the timeline to the last visible frame where we can still see the four points in the background image. Right-click and select Move 2D Markers. Now just click each point, paying attention to their reference colors. First, click on the point, and then click where we need to move it. Do this for all four points, and once we do this, the four empties will be created. However, depending on the scale of the scene, they might be very small. I forgot to adjust the empty size parameter, but no problem, we can fix it manually. Go to the group that was created, select all four empties, and in the 3D view, 
just click on Adjust Empty Display Size. Then move the mouse and the size of all of them will be adjusted. And with just these two steps, creating a group of four 2D markers and setting only two references on the timeline, we already have the four empties created, as you can see during playback, and everything is working correctly. However, as I mentioned before, the ideal is to add at least three reference points for each marker. So let's do that to improve accuracy. Let's move the timeline closer to the middle, and I'll also zoom in a bit so we can move the two 2D markers at the bottom in this first step. Right-click and select Move 2D Markers. Then, using the colors as a guide, click on the marker and then click where it should create a reference on that frame. One thing to keep in mind is that every time you do this, the size of the empties will be adjusted. So set a size in the panel that you think is ideal for the empties in your scene. With the two points at the bottom adjusted, now we just need to do the same process for the top points. This add-on also has a parameter called RMS, which stands for Root Mean Square. It measures the error factor between the points, showing how well they converge to a single point for triangulation. This value can be high if the tracking isn't good, or if different points were clicked on the background image when creating the 2D markers. Try to adjust the points that have their quality set to poor, moving each one closer to its reference. You can navigate between them using the first, previous, next, or last functions in the panel. Try to adjust all points marked as poor so that they reach at least an acceptable quality. You can also see the quality of all markers by clicking Show All Markers RMS and check which ones need adjustment. Now, to finish and create our plane, just select the four empties we created, go to the Mesh Builder panel, choose the Face Mode, and click Create Face. If an error occurs, check that you haven't selected more than four empties or fewer than three, and try again. A nice detail is that if the Create Hooks option is enabled, the vertices will be created connected to the hook, which can be useful for creating simulations. And with that, we've finished the tutorial for this scene, and we'll move on to the next example. In this next example, we have a tracking created using Colmap and imported into Blender. As you can see, the tracking is pretty decent, but just like in real life and in studio workflows, we don't always have all the 3D reference points we need. In the case of Colmap, we don't have control over where the markers are created in 3D space. As you can see around the letters, some markers are missing. This is where we can use the add-on 2D to 3D location to find exactly where these letters are in 3D space. Let's use the letter H as an example. So click in Create Location Group and create four markers to find the edges of the letter. After placing the four markers, press S on the keyboard or right-click with the mouse to finish the group. Move the timeline to a new frame preferably as far ahead as possible, and click on Move 2D Markers to create a new reference for them, just like we did in the previous examples. To further improve the quality of the markers, we can move the timeline roughly to the middle and create new references for all the markers, giving us an even better result. After finishing, we can start a playback to check that everything is correct, and once it is, we can start modeling whatever we want. In this example, I'll create a 3D letter H. I'll select the four empties we created, go to the Box Mesh Builder, and create a face from them. With this face created, I can easily use Blender's X-Ray mode to add new edges, define the 3D shape of the letter H, and create everything quickly and easily. And with that, we've completed another example. Here we have another scene where the tracking was also created using Colmap. As you can see, the result is pretty good, with many point clouds that can be used as references. But what if we need to create a 3D element that doesn't have any point clouds? That's when we can use the add-on 2D to 3D location to generate that reference for us. For example, if we want to create something on this table, like ground shadows or a collision element for simulations, we can easily do it using create location groups. At the end, we can create a face with the mesh builder and model the shape of the table, for instance. And when we play back the scene, the top of our table will be ready to use. And as a final example, let's look at this new scene where the tracking was created directly inside Blender. As you can see, the result is also pretty good. 
Here, for example, I already have two points connected, like a wire linking two high voltage towers. One detail is that when the add-on is enabled, you can show or hide the camera's background image in the scene's header view, and you can also enable or disable the display of the 2D markers. Remember that the correct way to work in 3D is to always use a background image without distortion. In Blender, when we create a solver, we can enable this option, and it automatically generates the parameters to distort the reference. In this case, go to the image used as the background and click Render Undistorted to see the reference without any distortion. If you disable it, we lose all the marker references. So the correct workflow is to keep it active, and during compositing, apply the distortion to the 3D elements to match the plate used. And as a final example, I'd like to show you that we can also create geometry using the markers or trackers generated by Blender's camera tracker. For instance, I can select four markers that are close to the ground to create a plane. Let's select these four trackers. In the Mesh Builder panel, simply change the selection mode from Empty Selection to Motion Tracking Selection, and this way we can create the geometry correctly. It's worth mentioning that the Builder mode is still in development. For example, it can generate a mesh based on the selection of multiple empties, but it may require several adjustments after creation. Still, it's a good starting point for modeling. And that wraps up this tutorial. If you encounter any bugs, click the button at the bottom of the panel. A modal window will open with instructions on how to report the issues and the email address to send them to. Thank you for staying with me until the end, and we'll see you soon with more updates and new features. See you in the next video.